Good morning, everyone. Lori Marie here, mixed media artist in Vallejo, California. We're going to be playing with a mixed media piece today uh, texture paste, watercolor paints, that kind of stuff. I'll show you in a minute. So, um, yeah, I got nothing to tell you this morning. So, see you on the table. So, everything's said and done. This is the piece that we're going to work on today with an image. This happens to be a bird image on a branch. This was something I found on my floor. This was a piece of wrapping paper, I believe. It's been sitting around for a while. This is texture paste, watercolor paints, a map. So that's our project for today. All right, let's talk about the supplies that we're gonna need. We're gonna need our Mod Podge and our brush. some spray ink, texture paste. This is some texture paste that I have made. I'm very happy with it. It's almost gone, almost dried up. A stencil and a palette knife. Some kind of a substrate. I'm going to be working on this one. This is the cradle. Uh, Courtney gave me three of them. We're working on our second one together watercolor paints. I have QOR and they are just yummy. They come in like a little beginner sample kit which is really nice. You'll need your underpants of course. Stabilo of course. I'm going to be using a map for part of the background and I'm going to be using this beautiful cardinal on my piece today. So what we're going to do first is put our underpants on the cradle and you all know how to do that. So I will begin that. Most of you have uh, done this process with me. Since it is a cradle I will be taking the underpants down the sides of the cradle. So I will leave some edge hanging over like that so that that can wrap down. Oh, two. Bonus. You guys have seen me do this frequently enough. You certainly don't have to watch. All right, I have my underpants on. Good job, everyone. Now I'm going to bring my focal point back in. This was just a strip that was on the floor, so I picked it up. thought it would be kind of a fun branch. So let's just say that that's going to be there. I want the map as a background, but just a portion of a background. So let's see. I think this side is better. I kind of want it like that. Alright, let me get my focal point off there. My podge is still a little damp. So let's see. We're looking at about like that. Alright, I'm going to take a pen and I'm just going to mark that approximately where that's going to be. Alright, and now I'm going to grab my stencil and my texture paste. Let's see if we can get that all on there. Not quite. Not quite. All right, so my line is right along here. So I'm going to put texture paste in this section. So I'll grab some texture paste with my palette knife. It's nice and stiff. Wow. And locate my line again. And if you happen to go over your line, it doesn't matter because you can just knock it down, knock down that texture paste. And 
I'm just going to fill it as much as I can. Very well loved stencil. I have to make some more texture paste. Happen to really enjoy this stuff. And I'm going to lift this up carefully. And then I have a little corner here that I want to apply some to. All right, I feel like we've got pretty good coverage there. Absolutely divine. All right, so let's go in this corner. <clears throat> there we go. Put a little bit in this corner too. I think so. Just a little bit. Beautiful. So that's the upper corner. And now we're going to let that dry. Okay, this is the ultra, ultra marine blue, which can be pretty intense. So we'll see how that goes water on my brush. Not too much. Let's just see how... <laughs> yep, it's intense. All right, we're going for it. And I'm just going to paint the entire thing with the blue. Now my texture paste is mostly dry. But if it's not 100% dry, it's okay, because it's going to have another opportunity to dry under this watercolor paint. I'm going to go ahead and hit the sides, not as intensely, but get some color on the sides of that cradle. Just go around and paint that. And then we're going to let that dry. Okay, so here's our fully painted piece. It's about dry. Feels like it's about dry. Now I'm going to take my sanding block and I'm just going to go in here and I'm going to knock that texture paste down. I'm not going to make you listen to the noise, but you're going to go in here and take it down. So I go in pretty aggressively with that sanding block. Isn't that beautiful already? And clean it off. Gorgeous. Now I am going to take my map and I am going to glue it into place so it looks like I can take this down like this, make this smaller so that it's a little bit easier to deal with. Let's just do that. I want a straighter rip, so I'm just going to grab this. I, we shall see. We shall see. Alright, so if we have this like this, 
this, this, and this, this. Rip it so that you get the beveled edge and not the white part. I want it to go down the edge of the box some, but not completely. This is my Fisker's paper decler. I want it uneven in a controlled way. All right, so that is better. Oh yeah, that's good. Do we want that? Maybe this can be a little bit shorter here. Cheers. I'm going to take my Mod Podge and I'm going to put my Mod Podge on the back of my map and then I'm going to put it on here and the reason I don't put it on here is because this is watercolor paint and the Mod Podge will move it too much. So I'm going to put Mod Podge on the back of this and glue it down. So I have Mod Podge on the back of my map. I'm just kind of following the line that we created early on. And push that down into place. Job well done. So it's on the edge somewhat. <clears throat> nice edge here, no white. This will clean up with some stipula. That'll be fine. That will be fine. Okay. Now we're going to bring some ochre in. One of my favorite colors of watercolor paint. Put some in my nice clean watercolor tray. Oh, we're getting quite a collection on this desk, aren't we? Alright, there's my ochre watercolor paints. Add some water, not too much. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint the whole thing with the ochre. I'll paint the sides. Beautiful. Love that color. And then check the front. Looks like we could use some more on the texture paste area. And that ochre just pulled that map in nicely, didn't it? Alright, it is totally the next day. The sun is not up yet. Uh, it won't be long though, and it will be up. So here's the, um, the dried piece. So as I look at it, I would like a little bit more contrast in that upper part. So I'm going to take my sanding block 
And I'm going to just go in and sand that a little bit. And bring a contrast up. And that texture paste is just like cement, so you can really apply some pressure. There we go. That's better for my eye. I'm going to bring my focal points in, this fun little branch off the floor, and this bird, and I'm just going to glue that down with some Mod Podge. Since we have those fun little feet, I'm going to put some glue on the back claw and glue him down to the stick so that only his front little toes are on the stick where we can see them. And as soon as I can move that, which is clearly now, I'm going to put Mod Podge on the back of this. Because once again, we are working on a watercolor surface. And the Mod Podge will move that watercolor, which I do not want to happen as much as possible. Anyway. you up. Clean my surface off. And I'll turn it around for a moment, sorry. Decide what this is going to be. straight there, buddy. Can you straighten your legs? <gasps> We're losing you. Skinny little legs. Better just put you down. Wrapping that stick around the edge of the frame. We'll work putting that down better in a minute. Skinny little legs. There we go. And put him down. All right, I'm going to go with the in with the stipolo around all the edges of the frame. You know me in that smoky finish, just can't get enough of it. And hopefully you've seen the tutorial on the stipolo so you can see different ways of playing with that. So as I'm playing with this, the scrap paper has a bit of height to it, and so I can't get really, really close with my Stabilo. So I'm taking that uh, makeup Q-tip with just a itty bitty, 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 bitty bit of moisture on it, and I'm getting that Stabilo closer to that um, scrap of paper. You know, that's part of art. Create, adjust, create, adjust. Problem solving at all times. There. 
I like the, the closeness of this Davillo to that branch. yet. All right, I'm going to work on the bird. Now you have seen me take um, the paper dolls or anything with um, some height to it, some thickness to it I should say, and darken the edges and I didn't think that this bird was thick enough to have to bother with that. So I'm just relying on the Stabilo to darken that edge, which is working fine. You know, some of you are like, oh, how do you stay so organized? And what I have to tell you is I purge frequently. Every, I don't know, maybe every three months or so, I purge my uh, inventory of images and um, underpants things that looked interesting maybe two months ago are not so interesting anymore so I'm constantly purging getting rid of things that I thought were interesting but mm, they don't hold much interest anymore so it's important that we as mixed media artists do purge keep things fresh in our inventory. Otherwise, it's overwhelming. All right, I'm going to go along the edge of the map a little bit. And then I'm going to check the energy on this piece. What I would like to see is I would like to see the map scruffed up a little bit, just in some spots. So it's not so flat looking. All right, it looks pretty good. Um, hmm, maybe a little bit around those feet, huh? Forgot the feet. What I would like to do next is to bring in a little bit of spray ink. Now it's like, at this part it's like, oh gosh, it looks fine. Do we do anything else to it? This is where it gets scary. <laughs> so I have tried all of these inks on my workspace, trying to find one that might work. They've all been eliminated except for this one. It's cherry pie. It's red. <clears throat> I'm going to spray some in the corner and we shall see what happens. Everybody hold, <laughs> hold their breath. And we're going to see. I'm going to stand it up. Oh, scary. Paper towel. Add some down here. <clears throat> I'm going to bring my white paint pen in and just put the dot back in his eye. Bring that forward. Oh yes. So fun. And I'm going to bring my sanding block back in and I'm going to tone this down.
that is pretty divine. We'll go back in here, darken this edge a little bit. And, hmm, gotta have some dots. I'm gonna play with some dots. Pick up this white, huh? <laughs> you never know. The more you play, the more you play. Oh, yeah. All right, one final thought here. I went back in and sanded some more to get some more contrast. And I'm gonna go in with my white pen and I'm just gonna re-highlight re his belly feathers just to bring them forward a little bit. He can take that. His chest got just a little bit too solid for me. But sometimes we don't know these things until we live with the piece for a little while, so let me turn them around and just give them a little bit more contrast in those belly feathers. Hit his little beak there too. Just a little bit of contrast there. Just chest to pop out a little bit more. Let's see. This is a pencil. So I went in with a pencil and I picked up some of his feathers, put some white paint on his belly to bring that forward. Just going to sand him down a little bit. There we go. Love the contrast. I'm going to hit the stick a little bit, the branch a little bit, and some hubbies in his studio. Sawing. All right, I do believe we are there. Beautiful mixed media piece. Yep, pretty happy with that. Go, <laughs> I'm looking at it. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. It's pretty darn good. How do you know when you're done? I guess you know when you're done by when you put your tools down. And not until. All right, I'm going to call it done. Go create, go play, go have fun. Thanks for joining me on the table for this mixed media project. Love you guys.